pollution. An oil tanker in Alaska runs aground and spills 10 million gallons of crude oil into the Prince William Sound. Or somewhat similarly, 5,000 feet underwater in the Caribbean Ocean, an oil well breaks, spilling oil, and spills 200 million gallons into the Caribbean Sea. Or something, something quite different. In Colorado, a silver mine closed in 1929 has a little stream coming out of it. That stream goes into a, a bigger stream, and the stream has been sterilized for as long as anybody can remember. Or how about this one? In Pensacola, Florida, there's a company that does dry cleaning, and they use perchloroethylene as a dry cleaning solvent. They keep the perchloroethylene in underground storage tanks, and the tanks are leaking, and the neighbors are finding PCE in their in their wells, or power plants, coal-fired power plants produce, the leftover is this, is this awful toxic sludge, and they put it in these ponds with these dams. In western North Carolina, there's a big rainstorm, and one of these ponds breaks open and releases 3,000 tons of toxic junk into a na neighboring river. These types of pollution are very different, have different causes, and have different solutions. Um, let's look at energy. Cars run on gasoline, and trucks run on diesel. What's the difference between gasoline and diesel? What's oxygenated fuel? Now they want to put ethanol in gas in gasoline. What's what's ethanol anyway? How, how could that possibly be a fuel? oxygenated fuel. They grow corn and, and make it into ethanol and then put that in cars. Um, why are um, hybrid cars such a good idea? And in the realm of health and diet, vegetarians need to think about complementary proteins. Now all of a sudden we need to eat f free range beef and wild caught salmon. What's, a, what's an omega-3 fatty acid anyway? What's a polyunsaturated fatty acid for all that matter? I'm gluten-free? What does it mean to be biodegradable anyway? And um, in um, genetics and DNA, what is, what is DNA fingerprinting? Why is cancer such a difficult problem? These questions all have a basis in organic chemistry, the chemistry of carbon. And there's thought that maybe we should just teach organic chemistry. I say let's just do it. Organic chemistry is all about carbon. Carbon is a, it's a small molecule. It's a molecular weight of six. Carbon, there's complications, but on its simplest level, carbon likes to form four equal bonds. It has, there are four clouds that come out of the central atom. Four clouds that come out of the nucleus. The clouds are the same and the clouds repel each other. And the result of this is that it sticks out equally in all sides and makes a tetrahedron. I think it's a cool word, tetrahedron. A tetrahedron is like, it's this triangular thing. It has um, four sides and they're all the same. If you take the four clouds and put a hydrogen on each one of them, you end up with a molecule with a carbon and four hydrogens. It's called methane, and you could say, um, well, okay, why is this a big deal? Methane may well be the most important compound in our industrial world. Co methane is natural gas. It burns, and um, it's symmetrical. Methane burns, and I can't really think of much else to say about it. It burns, and it's a gas. If you put two of these together, then you get ethane, and ethane is um, ethane is similar. It's a gas, and it burns. Ethane has two molecules of carbon. So one of the cool tricks about carbon is that it likes to form four equal bonds, but it will form bonds with itself. And then if you put yet another one on, you end up with a molecule 
that's called propane. Propane is the same as ethane and the same as methane in that it burns. And uh, it looks like a little dog. Well, it, 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 okay, it looks like a little dog, whatever. But it has three carbons um, and you know, you, you could complicate it or not. I say, let's don't complicate this. If you put another one on, you end up with a compound that's called butane. Butane has four carbons, and it's a little bit of a, of a um, you know, it can turn around and stuff, but there, there are things to talk about, but I want to back up just a little bit. So, I'm sitting here telling you that this is um, butane. So, I think a reasonable question from an intelligent student would be, this guy says this is butane, propane, where is he getting this stuff? The truth about it is that, I'm telling you this is butane, it's a fantasy invented by scientists the the job of the of the chemist and the job of the physicist is to reach into an invisible world reach into a world that we have no possibility of actually experiencing with our senses and then come up with something that we can talk about and see and understand and communicate and this is what they've come up with but there's the, the, you say, well, where did this come from? This is it's fabricated by the mind of human beings. Nobody really knows what it looks like. But the in the defense of the model, it's been around a long time. It's well um, established, and the the quantum mechanical theory of molecular structure has done a very good job of explaining observations and of predicting outcomes. And I think that as educators, if we put our cards on the table on this, I think it'll be easier to learn. So, my plead with you, dearest, dearest students, is to accept the model. I'm telling you it's a fantasy, okay? Put my cards on the table. This is a fantasy. But I'm asking you to accept it and to walk down this path with me.